I don't usually make non-anime and such videos. However, with the new season of Snowpiercer on the horizon, I just wanted to unleash some of my pet peeves on the TV series. I like this show. It's not the best thing ever, but it's a good watch. I don't find much to annoy me, but boy, the annoying things are really damn annoying. Before I start, as a summary of the plot, Snowpiercer takes place in a world where the Earth has cooled significantly and is a giant frozen ball. The last remnants of life, humanity included, are on board a train, Snowpiercer, that is circumnavigating the world and can never stop or everyone on board will die. Humans being humans, despite being stuck on the last arc, are total shits to each other. And so the story follows all the strives and gripes on Snowpiercer, 1,134 cars long. I want to mention that I will try to be light on spoilers, but there are just some things I can't talk about without going into spoiler territory. So here is a spoiler alert. And now, in no particular order. Lila Jr. Specifically, how is she still alive and prancing about? I don't want to give too many spoilers, but honestly, the only reason I can think of that the people of this murder train who would freeze off the arm of a six-year-old suddenly find it too unethical and bothersome to deal with her is because she's young, female, and attractive, and that reason is just not good enough for me. I do like the character though, and I'm sad that we didn't see more and less pointless scenes of her throughout season two. How the heck did this glass break so easily? Like, plot-wise, I understand why this was done. We couldn't give Leighton too many clues too quickly and too early on, otherwise he might have solved the case too fast, and then where would the conflict be? But if your story has to break your viewer's suspension of disbelief, and maybe even create plot holes in order to facilitate the plot, maybe don't do it? As soon as I saw the scene, I thought of airplane windows and bulletproof windshields and that scene from some movie that I can't remember where a character takes an axe to a glass window and the only thing that breaks off is a single shard of glass. These glass windows are helping to keep the freeze out, maybe make them out of something stronger than the glass equivalent of cheap toilet paper. Josie. Bloody Josie. Specifically, how the hell is she still alive? Look, creators of Snowpiercer. You cannot have it both ways. You can't show people freezing and dying within seconds, not minutes, of being exposed to the cold, but then have a character survive so long in the cold. Yes, Josie might have still been conscious and so turned off the pipe and stopped the cold from getting in. However, she was on the floor for a good long time. The room froze over. Cold air sinks. Hot air rises. It simply wouldn't have gotten warm quickly enough to allow her to survive. She should be dead. Miles. I guess the creators of the show decided that having two engineering child prodigies would stretch the realism of the show about a train that can't stop or all its passengers will freeze to death. I honestly would have credited the creators if they had allowed both Miles and Alex to coexist, because it would have given an interesting contrast of how environment affected these two very smart kids. But it's obvious that Miles was sidelined so as not to detract worth and attention from Alex. I get that, but it's still really annoying. You can't have a character who plays such a pivotal role in the first season and in the lives of the main characters up and disappear with nothing more than a glorified cameo. I would have preferred if Miles had died or gone missing and presumed dead as just another straw in the series' efforts to break Leighton. Wilford The best thing about Wilford is that he's played by Sean Bean, so we know he's going to die. Now, Sean Bean does a good job of pulling off the character as a sociopathic, narcissistic man-child, but Jesus, the character himself is so irritating. He's not the kind of villain we love to hate, he's just the kind we just hate. I don't find him as charismatic as the citizens of Snowpiercer seem to. He just seems like the creepy neighbor you wouldn't leave your kids with. And I guess when they were choosing all the passengers for non-first class, they chose all the gullible idiots. Which would surprisingly make sense since Wilfred would have selected many of these people and of course he would have chosen people that he could easily control. Melanie's death slash not death. So I find it hard to choose between Ruth and Melanie as my favorite character. Ruth is OG and I can't wait to see her done war paint and stab Wilfred to death. No, I haven't read any of the novels or graphic novels so if this really happens it's just a coincidence I said this. Melanie, on the other hand, is just flawed enough as a person to stop her from being a Mary Sue. 
I was majorly disappointed with her alleged death and sincerely want to see more of her. Of course, despite my disappointment, I would have accepted it and moved on, but for the fact that it's so freaking ambiguous and inconclusive. I haven't done any research to check, but I'm cynically aware of some of the real-world effects on movies and TV shows. More than likely, Jennifer Connelly only signed a contract for two seasons, and the creators weren't sure if she would have returned for a third, and that negotiations would be hard. So, they gave us a debt that was open-ended. If Connolly comes back, they can retcon it because we never actually saw her die. If she doesn't, then her death stands. If I'm right, the whole thing is as manipulative and irritating as Wilford. And that is not a compliment.